Our second lecture for this week will be about microscopy. And so we're skipping to chapter three in Tortora. So let's take a look at um, different types of microscopes and what you might be able to see with them. So if you have, uh, we're going from larger here, a tick, um, to smaller, all the way down to a DNA molecule. And um, if you just want to see a tick, you really don't need that sophisticated of a microscope. You can even see it with the unaided eye. So that would be unaided eye down here. And so the sizes uh, you can see down here. If you want to take a look at red blood cells, or you want to take a look at... Um, E. coli here, for example, bacteria, a light microscope is a good choice. Uh, hopefully we get to see them with our light microscopes. I'm so curious and waiting for what kind of results we can get with our new microscopes. Now, if you wanted to see something smaller than bacteria, then you're going to have to go to electron microscopy. And so here, if you want to take a look at the surface of something, then you would take a scanning electron microscope. If you want to have a more in-depth view of the inside of something, then you need a transmission electron microscope. And um, so a few viruses right here, that's, this is an example here for bacteriophage. Um, they are in the order of nanometers, and uh, you need to definitely have a... Um, um, an electron microscope. If you want to take a look at molecules, well then you gotta go extreme. So that those are just way too small to see with. Um, I mean, even the the um, maybe a transmission electron microscope might be able to do this, but you probably need an atomic force um, microscope. So. Anyway, that was sort of the overview. Um, I know we did this extensively in the lab, so but I'm still gonna sort of touch on it, make sure that we're on the same page. The um, microorganisms are measured in micrometers. So if you wanna express the size of E. coli, you would express that in micrometers. Uh, if you have a virus, then we use typically nanometers to describe the size. And um, you should know that one micrometer is 10 to the 6 meter, I'm sorry, 10 to the negative 6 meter, and, uh, or 10 to the minus 3 uh, millimeters. So it's 1,000, so um, one micrometer is 1,000 of a millimeter, and one micrometer is also one millionth of a whole meter. Okay. Um, nanometers, uh, we again, we need them to describe the size of viruses. So a nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meters, so one billionth of a meter, or one millionth of a millimeter. And here, just to sort of review that, 1,000 nanometers is one micrometer, or one nanometer is 0 0.001 micrometer. But um, I think we did all of these review sheets. I think you should be good with the metrics. Here is that ancient microscope, uh, the first one. Anton von Leeuwenhoek was the one that um, sort of put this thing together. And um, it's probably in some museum somewhere, but uh, this is sort of the very first. Oh, take a look at this lens up here. It's kind of interesting to take a look at that. And um, the three principles of microscopy, make sure that you know that because I will be testing you on that on a quiz. So magnification, resolution, contrast, those are the three big principles of microscopy. Now the microscope that we will be using most and um, sort of a standard for microbiology course is the, mic is the light microscope. And so um, that is... Um, you know, of course, there are all of these other microscopes. So we have the um, the compound light microscope that is what we're using. Um, we in the lab we also have uh, one example of a dark field microscope and a phase contrast microscope, but that's not the standard for microbiology course. It's uh, something for demo purposes. And really cool fluorescent and confocal microscope microscopy. Those are really cool to look at. They produce amazing images, uh, 3D images of the interior of cells. It's really cool, but we don't have the capacity to do that. So let's take a look uh, again at a regular compound light light microscope. Make sure that you know the parts. So one more time, the ocular lens that will be up here. The body tube, um, that's sort of this connector here, piece here to uh, transition to the arm. Then the arm 
going down here this is where you're grabbing your microscope the objective lenses those are these guys right here the stage is where you put your specimen on right here uh, the condenser is below the stage the diaphragm also below the stage these two they kind of close together and then illuminator of the light source uh, that's down here and then you have your focus knob you have a coarse and a fine focus knob and down here is the base of the microscope and that's it so make sure that you know these parts i think we covered that pretty extensively in the lab so um also the um calculation of the total magnification make sure that you know that it's the objective lens times the ocular lens power and then you get the total magnification uh, the path of light through a light microscope is seen right here so you can follow that you can see how the light gets refracted several times here so we have a light source down here then we follow here we have the first time our condenser lens will refract the light bend it then we have our objective lenses then here's a prism it's like a little mirror and then here we have the ocular lenses in the end when it's all said and done we are uh, have we are looking at an inverted image because we are inverting actually three times so um, let's move on to resolution that's the ability of the lens to distinguish two points that are very close together um, so in other words, a microscope with a resolving power of 400 nanometers is expected to be able to distinguish between points that are at least 400 nanometers apart. So um, in a light microscope, we are limited to the wavelength of light, to visible light. And so that's uh, pretty much right there, 400 nanometers. It's sort of our resolution limit with a light microscope because we're depending on the wavelength of light. Invisible light starts about um, 400 nanometers. Below that will be more the UV range. Okay. Um, the refractive index. So refraction means... Um, that you're bending the, the light beam or this uh, photon beam basically and so depending on the kind of material something passes through the light passes through um, the light will be bent more or less so the refractive index of a material is sort of this light bending ability of the material and uh, we talked about it uh, the other day uh, immersion oil is used to keep light from refracting because it has the same refractive index as glass and take a look at this here so we have the um, the immersion oil is right here and instead of the light going from glass the glass light to air then back into um, the um, objective lens we're, we're bridging this gap right here and minimizing the the refraction of light so that we have a good amount of light going through so immersion oil will help us to minimize refraction and minimize this um, straying the loss of light okay now we're going to scroll through some other microscopes um, just for information's sake the one that you definitely are held accountable for is the compound light microscope and um, the parts of it and how it works, the principles and uh, so some information surrounding that, the immersion oil, what the purposes of that. So, but uh, we're gonna also have some other microscopes and we're gonna um, scroll scroll through them um, right now. In bright field microscopy, uh, we are looking at an object against a bright background. So we have a darker um, object that we're looking at and we have a bright background. So here is an example for that. You can see how the background here is lighter. So it's almost white and then you have this um, paramecium here and that is kind of darker than the background. Uh, dark field microscopy is kind of the opposite. There you have a light object that's visible against the dark background. And here's an example for that. You can tell that there is this dark background and then here we have this object that we're looking at is uh, brighter. Next up is phase contrast microscopy. In that case, um, it's giving you a better idea of the depth of an organism, so if you can scroll through the depth of your object that you're looking at. And um, so there you have more of a almost 3D experience. 
So here's an example for that. Um, you don't need to know the path of light. So this stuff here, you don't need to know this. Um, but take a look at these images. Phase contrast um, gives you a nice um, contrasting, almost a, you know, a depth perception, almost a three-dimensional kind of um, idea. Now, <clears throat> differential interference contrast um, microscopy, similar to phase contrast. Um, microscopy. So here's an image that you would be generating with differential interference contrast microscopy. Um, as far as I know, this, these uh, methods are not as popular right now. What's really popular is fluorescence microscopy. And we have these new fluoro, um, these, these chromophores that you can use, um, and then you get these different fluorescent colors, and you can stain things nicely. It's awesome. Those images are really pretty. So we're using a uh, UV shortwave light beam to excite our um, fluorescent material and then it reflects the light in a different wavelength and it gives you this uh, fluorescent um, kind of vision or uh, this, uh, this image of fluorescence. So here's a, um, here is a stained slide uh, where immunofluorescence was used. And another big favorite right now is confocal microscopy because the, with that, you're combining fluorescence um, microscopy with a 3D image or 3D true 3D ex experience. And so um, take a look at a picture like that. So you have different chromophores right here. You have orange fluorescence and green fluorescence. And you can label the different parts of a cell. Um, here the cilia and then you have the nucleus. You can label that in different colors. It still get really nice images. Then moving on to two photon microscopy, uh, the cells are also stain for with the fluorochrome, and um, take a look at what you can do with this. This is two photon microscopy. I'm not sure how popular that one is right now. I do know that fluorescent microscopy is huge right now. Then scanning acoustic microscopy also, again, this is mostly for your information. I'm not going to test you on details on these, but you should have heard or seen what's out there and what you can do with this. Um, this one measures sound waves that are reflected back from a specimen. And you have a pretty bad resolution, but anyways, gives you a different kind of uh, image here, scanning acoustic microscopy. And then very popular because you have just such a good resolution, the electron microscope. And there's different ways, some that focus more on the surface of an object and others that are more transmission. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, we have the better resolution because we're using electrons instead of light. So we're not limited to visible light, which that starts at 400 nanometers. So you can't really go better than 400 nanometers of resolution on your light microscopes. But electron microscopy uses the electron beam and that shorter wavelength just gives you much better resolution. So it's really good for stuff that's too small to be seen um, with a light microscope, such as viruses, for example. So here, a transmission electron microscope, the beam of electron passes through the specimen. And here's an example. Again, you don't have to know the path of light of these, but take a look at what you can get with that. So transmission electron microscopy. So that's pretty good. TEM stands for transmission electron microscopy. And um, the magnification that you can get with an electron microscope is about 100,000 X. So that's like the max. So 10,000 to 100,000 X. Yesterday we calculated that with the, if we put in the 25 X oculars and we have 40 X, I'm sorry, 100 X, our oil immersion lens, we get 2,500. So that's as good as it gets for, for a light microscope. Uh, I'm curious to see how good these images will be at that magnification, but the electron uh, microscope, as you can see, takes that much further. And the scan standing electron microscope, that one scans the surface of a specimen. So you get a really nice uh, impression of the um, sort of the three-dimensional surface of a specimen. And you can see that here. So here you have um, the label would then say SEM for scanning electron microscopy. 
and scanning electron microscopy you're magnifying objects a thousand to ten thousand fold and you have a resolution of about 10 nanometers and that's about the size of a dna molecule 10 nanometers so that's pretty cool right here you can different materials can be scanned with a scanning scanning um, electron micro microscope so that's it on our little survey of the different types of microscopes be sure that you understand uh, the big principle of microscopy the magnification uh, resolution and contrast idea and then how to calculate a total magnification understand for sure the parts of the light the compound light microscope <clears throat> excuse me and um we um this is it for the um microscopy section of this uh, chapter i'm going to stop that here right now and we're going to have another video on staining uh, that will be very important for you guys